Phase 1 or Pre-Surgical Evaluation Hello! In this video, we'll talk about your child's Phase 1 evaluation or Pre-Surgical Evaluation at the Epilepsy Center of Boston Children's Hospital. A Phase 1 evaluation gives doctors the information they need to find out if surgery is an option to help treat your child's seizures. In order to know if your child is a good fit for epilepsy surgery, your child will be admitted to the hospital for several days to gather information from different tests. We'll talk to you about what to expect during the hospital stay and each of these tests. Your doctor will tell you exactly which tests your child will need because not every patient will need every test. None of them hurt, but several require your child to lie very still. What happens during the hospital stay? You will check in at the admissions department on your scheduled day and time of admission, and they will help you go to the neurology floor. Once you arrive at our front desk, you will be directed to your child's room. A nurse will come to get you settled in. He or she will review your child's medical history, medications, and complete a brief physical exam and vital signs. You'll always have a designated bedside nurse who will change shifts two to three times per day. An EEG technologist will come and place the EEG, which will continuously record brain waves, audio, and video in the room throughout the admission. If you would like to learn more about this, we've created other videos about getting an EEG placed, one for parents and one for your child to watch. For safety, your child will need an IV in case we need to give a medication quickly to treat a long seizure. You will meet the team throughout your stay. We will see you and your child one to two times daily on rounds. We have many providers on our teams that all work together to provide the best care, including resident doctors, nurse practitioners, fellow doctors, and attending doctors, or the doctor in charge. The parent's role. A parent or guardian who is over 18 and knows your child's seizures and spells must stay at your child's bedside throughout the hospital stay. Many families share the job of staying with your child and have two adults alternate shifts. Rooms have a pullout chair for one parent to sleep on. The parent gives consent or permission for tests and procedures during the hospital stay and helps to point out seizure events. The parent writes down descriptions of what happens during your child's events, including the times they happen, and presses an event marker button to note the time they happen. This is very helpful to the doctors when reviewing the EEG. Sometimes longer seizures happen that do not stop on their own. If this happens, our team is ready to give medication. There is an emergency button in the room you can push, and the doctors and nurses will come in right away to help your child. We understand that it can be hectic and scary to have many people rushing into the room, but acting quickly helps us make sure that we can give the care and medication needed to your child. Lowering seizure medications. We may need to temporarily lower or stop your child's anti-seizure medications during the hospital stay in order for the seizures to happen. We know that this can be stressful. If we do this, it will happen slowly and carefully to help keep your child safe. The medications will be restarted at the original doses for at least one day before you go home. Phase one tests. There are several tests that may be performed during your hospital stay. Don't worry, none of these tests will hurt and not every child needs to have every test. We will review them all briefly and you can discuss with your child's neurologist about any additional questions. EEG. The most important test is the EEG, or brainwave study, that all patients will have. This helps us to understand more about the seizures and what part of the brain they are coming from. MRI. All of our patients need to have a picture taken of the brain. The preferred type of picture is called an MRI. This test doesn't hurt or require radiation, but the child does need to lie very still for the whole test. The MRI machine also makes loud noises. Many of our older patients can easily complete this test, and you can even watch a movie during it. However, some children may need medications to sleep during this test and stay still. 
Your neurologist will help to make this decision with you. Functional MRI. A functional MRI is a special kind of MRI that helps us understand which parts of your brain control certain functions, such as talking and moving. We will ask your child to talk, listen to stories, and move certain body parts during this study. Some children may need medications to sleep during this test, but we can still do a lot of this test even while they are asleep. SPECT. A SPECT scan is another type of picture that comes in two parts. One picture during a seizure and another in between seizures. A special medicine is given through an IV that shows what part of the brain cause the seizure. First, we try to give the medication during a seizure. To do this, our team has to come in very quickly to give the medicine, and this may involve the seizure alarm sounding. Next, the medicine will be given at a time when the child has not had a seizure. A picture will be taken after each time the medicine is given, and some children may need extra medications to sleep during this test. As you can imagine, this test is not always possible if seizures don't happen during the scheduled time. We understand this can be disappointing, but this isn't a required test, and we get a lot of other helpful information from this hospitalization. PET. Lastly, a PET scan is another type of picture that shows what part of the brain uses more or less sugar nutrients. This can give us a clue where seizures come from in the brain. For this test, you will receive instructions on not eating or drinking any sugar before the test. Otherwise, the child just has to lie still. And some children may require medications to help with this if needed. What happens after the admission? When it's time to go home, the team will review all of the available results with you. We'll share them with your child's primary neurologist as well. Some of the specialized test results can take longer to come back and may not be available before you go home. When all of the testing is finished, this information will be discussed at a meeting of the epilepsy doctors and surgeons to decide the next steps. Together, we'll create a treatment plan. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, call us at 617-355-7970.